Got the mail. Yeah. So we're room. All right, so we got the cat. Hey. You ever eat at the table? Nah, it's decoration. Do you eat in here? Are these yours? Hell oh, yeah, and you know that biggest one's mine. And you know what it says. Champion. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. And you know that one's. That's my brother's. Marcus. The same year. The same league. He lost though. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, man. That's awesome. Kindergarten, graduation, in my blue suit. Ah, there's Carol. It's my pop. Charles. Oh, that's my brother, Marcus. I didn't even see that picture. Yeah, you just got done a workout, man. Well, let's get a meal out. One of my P3 meals. Did your parents say anything about the P3 meals? Yeah. My mom said it takes up too much space in her food. I get that too. <laughs> P3 meals always take up way too much space. Is this you? Is it sponsored by Fruit Loops? <laughs> nah. No? Nah? Captain Crunch? Yeah, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Cereal guy, huh? I eat the. Alright, I'll eat one right now. Then you better eat one right now. Damn. <laughs> yeah, this, this is dying. You might want to have two of those after you eat one. This is egg. Yeah, egg. What? Hey, I'm allergic. You're allergic to eggs? Yeah. Well, you just don't like them. I'm allergic to raw eggs, so they have to be cooked well. Well, no, it's not raw. They, eat, they taste like nothing. Nasty. What? Eggs How can it be nasty. nasty if it tastes like nothing? Exactly. Like, yeah, I'll eat a, a breakfast sandwich though. We got to build some variety here, man. I know, listen man, the Popeyes and McDonald's and all that, that's got to... Yeah, I know. I got to gotta make progress. What's this? <laughs> it's a homemade iced tea. Homemade iced tea? Mm -hmm. How do you do homemade iced tea? You from a Chinese store. <laughs> Chinese store, huh? Alright. So give us a little tour. Bring us upstairs. Is this the room? Yeah. Got the dumbbell. The curls. Yeah, I got mom. Looks like shit in here, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It doesn't. It's not. This is this isn't too bad. This isn't too it's bad. It's not bad. This isn't too bad. You sound right. just like my mom. <laughs> Complaining about nothing. Big sneaker guy? Not really, but I like sneakers. You, you like to collect, or just like have? Different I just characters? like to have different kind, different car. Okay. I just got to use ones. Do you get a snipes discount? Yeah, 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 that's why I got so many. All right, we got the yearbook. Have for yearbook. You in here? Yeah. I'm this. There he is. <laughs> Boom. Marquise Mays. Look at that happy smile. Eh? <laughs> a close friend gave me this necklace when I was in the hospital when I got shot. Spin it. Told me her family was praying for me and that everybody was hoping that I was okay. She came to visit me and everything. It's awesome. Made me feel special. Happy. People care about me. Did it help you? During the recovery? I mean, I wore it every day. So I didn't take it off when she first gave it to me. Don't forget it, man. I gave it out. Alright. They was off that day. It was bad weather. Yeah. Or they didn't have school raining, that day. It was, it was raining right. real bad that Pretty day. Bad, yeah. He was having trouble swallowing, Couldn't swallow. so I said, let's go to, the, I took him to the emergency, University of Penn. I called, Mar Marquise called me while I was in the emergency room, and I said, where you at? He said, I'm in Havertown. I said, you're in Havertown, and all this rain, you're in Havertown? He said, I'm with my friends. I said, all right. 
I said, well, be careful. When you get ready to leave, call me, and you can catch a lift. So I got in bed because I had to go to work in the morning. I fell asleep. So my phone rang. It was my son, Marvin. So I said, what's, what's going on? He said, my Marquis been shot. I said, shot? He said, yeah. He said, you got to get the Lincoln off because they're getting ready to transport him to Jefferson, but you got to get the Lincoln off before they take him to Jefferson. Close friends told me, like, oh, did you hear this? Like, Marquise got shot or Marquise is, like, dead. Like, I just heard all these weird rumors. So then I was really worried. So then I was hitting him up. He wasn't answering. And then I forget who told me, or I think it came out on the news. So then I was like, that's where I found out. I'm supposed to hang out with him. They called me, I was like, nah, I can't, I gotta do this. And then they were like, all right, whatever, blah, 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 just kind of making jokes. So earlier, like eight, no, later, like eight, I'm eating, I get a phone call, my friend, I answer. He's like, yo, are you near anybody? I'm like, yo, what, what's up? He's like, I think he's got shot. I'm like, Dude. So I'm like, nah, no, he's like, nah, I'm being serious. So I call him, I text him, and then answer. I'm like, nah, something's wrong, because he always answers. Mm -hmm. So I'm calling him, calling him. Then I see him, what you saw, was like unidentified, 18 year old, like, damn. That's when I really knew. And then we kind of, we drove up there, we saw all the caution tape, everything. And I was like, yeah, it's bad. Anytime they say, Harry, I'm going to get to a certain hospital, I just knew. Because we never got a chance to talk to the police. We never got a chance to talk to anyone about what happened. Nothing. And I just, I just kept praying, saying, please don't let nothing happen to my son. Please. And the way they had him wrapped up, I didn't think my son was going to make it. I really didn't. Do you remember anything about that night being shot, like before you got shot? Like, do you remember, remember that feeling right before? Like, or you just, is everything blacked out? Yeah, I don't remember anything. If it wasn't for that lady in Haverford Township dialing 911 like she did, and that police officer being around the corner, Marquise might have not have made it. That lady really saved my son's life. Could have died. Like, if we weren't in Haverford Town, I would have died. Most likely because we were in the hood and there wouldn't be no cops around with them as fast as there was. So, you know, I'm just thankful to still be here. Marquise and Seth was in the back seat with another gentleman. This gentleman's supposed to be way older than them. And the boy with the gun was in the driver's, on the driver's side and with somebody else in the front side. Apparently, they saying. The boy, the man, I'm going to say it was a man because he was at a grown man's age. The one that was in between Marcus and Marquise, he had a feeling that they was going, Marquise and Seth was going to rob him. So, I don't know what happened, but he swung. And then Seth and Marquise got to fight and was punching on the guy. But all of a sudden, Marquise got out the car. They say Marquise got out the car, and when they know the gunshot, the gun went off. And when they know Marquise was on the, on the street, laying in the street. It was like I got punched in my face, and I can't see no more. That's what it was like. like it's just throbbing pain, and I just can't see on my eye no more. My other friends went to the hospital, and they couldn't see him because he was in uh, surgery and critical. So they just kind of sat there and waited until like they heard anything, and they couldn't. So. At that point, they knew like he was still alive, but like he was in like critical, like serious condition. They induced the coma, I believe, so they could medicate him and operate him and do whatever they had to do. But they said he had a good heartbeat. And Doc did say his heartbeat was strong, and he's like, he seems like he's fighting. We'll know after the surgery. We'll know. And something you mentioned earlier, I prayed, literally prayed. And they asked God to just bring him to this. I saw him, I was like, well, me and my other friend were one of the first people to see him. We walk in, like, his face is like huge. So I'm thinking, like, we're gonna have to play, like, thumbs up, thumbs down, because yeah, he's right. always up. And he's like, he's like sedated. It's him and his brother, he's like, yeah, you can come in. He was just kind of like, what's up? I was surprised that he could, like, even talk. So, like, because he had, like, bandages on his face, like, and all that. And he's like, what's up? Like, why he looks so, so scared? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you're in ICU, like, that's crazy, like. The recovery was amazing, how I came back. So, sat there like a month. I was, I was out of the hospital, back on my feet. 
I was back on my feet within like a week. Like when I woke up, I was back on my feet in a couple of days. Like I was walking around. Wasn't to, like like I don't know. I'm blessed. Like I'm blessed. I was just happy he wasn't dead. Like to be honest, with you, like straightforward. When I saw him breathing and everything, I was like, and he was gonna be okay. I, that was like a good thing for me. He was the same. That's all. I was kind of like he was making jokes while he was all nice and bandaged up with the doctor making jokes because they had him drinking like uh, had him eating ice. He didn't want to eat ice. He wanted to drink water. And he's like, oh, I don't want it. So it was like he was the same person. Nothing changed. He just had that soldier mentality. Like you got to keep going. That was him. The support from the community was awesome. I mean, awesome. One of his students, one of his friends had um, started up a GoFundMe page. And I mean, the support from Havertown, from that GoFundMe page, was beautiful. You got a lot of people that give a lot of shits about you. You know, you don't have to do anything. They just love seeing you because if you're who you are and who you've been your whole life and the way you've been to other people. Um, so you got a lot of people that care about you and you got a big community, you know, behind you. The people that knew Marquise at Haverford, like, they just all kept him in his prayers, in their prayers. They just really cared, always texting him, checking up on him, stuff like that. I felt overwhelmed, overwhelmed with the Great support community. from them. And the school, and the faculty. And, and when he was in the hospital, Marquise had to have at least about 20 of his classmates in the room at a time. I guess these nurses and them saying, who is this kid? I appreciate everything they did. They didn't know him. And to the young lady that made the 911 call, oh, yeah. I especially want to thank her. Mm. I ne they never told me her name. If I could see her, I would give her a hug and tell her thank you. It feels like I don't belong when I moved there. But like, and then I see all the people who care about me. I appreciate it. You know? I just try to be, I'm just real. I'm just myself, man. I don't have no problems with anybody or anything. Son, I love you. Keep fighting. I always got your back. And you're doing great. And don't look back. Keep looking forward. Because there's a beautiful future out there for you. I know it. Marquise, I want you to know that I love you. I'm always be there for you. Whatever career, whatever you decide to do, I got you. I'm there for you 100%. But well, please hurry so you can get your own place. <laughs> please. Yeah, that's a mama. <laughs> she doesn't mean that. Characteristics that help you push forward, we can use this to move forward. Adversity can only lead to better things. In my experience, adversity is good. Um, you're not saying the situation is good at all, but there's a lot we can take from it, all right? It's a lot. It's a lot. I learned from it. Live your life, chase your dreams. Love it.